Put, the, I think the most horrific idea is that we're not, we're alone. That we're, we're not living in a universe that's filled with life. That this is just some weird freak incident. Well, I think I'm a little bit controversial because I'm one of the few uh, colleagues of mine, well, I'm not a colleague of myself, but one of the few astronomers <laughs> I know who uh, concede that we might be alone. I'm, I'm open to that idea. I'm not saying it's true, well, I think we don't I'm, have any evidence that yeah, we're not alone. I think so. It is a possibility. Yeah, I think and it really kind of pisses me off, to be honest, when an astronomer is interviewed in a situation like this, and they're asked, "Do you think there are aliens out there?" And they say, "Yeah, of course. How can there not be? How can there not? The universe is so big. Blah blah, billions of stars. Of course, ergo, there must be aliens. But we have no idea what the probability of life starting is. I mean, even to make um, the you know a moderate-sized protein." A protein is just a chain of amino acids, and there's about 20 that go into making a protein. And a moderate-sized protein has 150 proteins in a row connected together. So the chance of amino acids randomly coming together to make even a, a moderate-sized protein is 20 to the power of 150. So that's 10 to the power of 195, right? So one with 195 zeros after it. It's just incredibly unlikely that would happen by chance. And we've never observed it in the lab. No one's ever got amino acids to spontaneously form anything like a life form or proteins in a, in a laboratory setting. So it is plausible uh, there's some unknown mechanism that accelerates that process, and we just haven't found it yet. But it's also plausible it was just incredibly unlikely. And maybe if you look out and cross 10 to the 22 stars in our, gal in our universe, observable universe, there's just one success. Now, the universe is probably infinite, so probably if you travel far enough, you'll eventually come to someone else. Maybe. But by all intents and purposes, we may as well be alone in that case because they're, they're outside the, our observable universe, so who cares what they're up to? So I'm open to that possibility. I'm not saying it's likely, but I think as a good scientist, I can't tell you, yeah, of course, of course there is because right. that's, that's now falling into experimenters' bias. I'm, I'm deciding what the answer is before I've done the experiment. That's not my job. My job is to figure out the answer. Of course, yeah. The idea that we are the first and we are the only one that exists out there and we are also the one that is creating this artificial intelligence, this artificial life, that seems almost almost the most interesting one. I mean, it's really interesting the idea that the universe is inhabited with super advanced life forms that can show us the way and how we can enter into the galactic empire and be friends with everybody. That's kind of cool. Yeah. But it's also almost more romantic and more wild to think that we're alone. Yeah. We're the, uh, the, the sole intelligence in the entire thing and that it's just this weird mistake where the universe wants to experiencing itself, wants to experiencing itself, wants to experience, it, experience itself while it's creating an ultimate intelligence. Yeah, wants to know itself, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... Uh... I mean, it's certainly possible. I think the problem is that you look at the genetic heritage of, of life and you know, this tree of life and you kind of rewind the tape. There was a great study that's done recently in Nature by uh, Moody et al. And uh, I found it really inspiring, this paper, because they had dated what's called LUCA, which is the um, last universal common ancestor. So we, we have you know, a huge number of genes which are the same as each other, but even with giraffes, octopuses, plants, we all, there's a huge number of overlap. So you can kind of retrace the tree and figure out what was the organism that started it all, that like lived at the bottom of this tree, and that's called LUCA. And that thing, they've now age-dated it to live 4.2 billion years ago. So the oceans formed about 4.4 billion years ago, and 200 million years after that, you've got organisms. And not just one, the, the, these things would have been all over the planet, all over the place. There was a whole ecosphere at that point of these things. So that, that was quick that life got going. Yeah. And that to me is probably the most compelling reason to believe that life is common. And if you would imagine the diversity in what you've, exp just what we know now about solar systems and how different life could possibly be with just a few variables off warmer weather colder weather more water less water some different compounds different plants different maybe a lack of asteroids maybe mm -hmm. a lack of comets lack of anything that might, might slam into the planet maybe it lives in a much more sta stable area that's not like where we are we're we're essentially in a shooting gallery if something can like have no disruptions like through civilization all to the invention of whatever the hell they have there with whatever resources they have there 
it's almost impossible to imagine like what we're dealing with and what we're talking about. It's one of the more fascinating things about science fiction is that they don't have any they don't have any limitations. If you want to have a, a thing that exists on Earth, well, it has to breathe air, it has to do this, it has to. Science fiction, you could have almost anything. Yeah. And when you take into account the fact that we haven't found anything like Earth anywhere else, and you have all these different planets and all these different planets that might be in a Goldilocks zone, and maybe that's not even important because we found life in volcanic vents underneath right. the ocean. So, like, what? What's out there? Yeah, it could. I mean, Europa could have life on the, the weird exoplanet. So it's certainly possible. There's place. There's life all over the place. I think what's interesting about the you know, the cosmic zoom out perspective of life is why do we live? Not where we live, but when we live in the history of the universe. So the universe is about thirteen point eight billion years old. But it should last for trillions, trillions of years. There will still be stars in a trillion years from now. There'll be those red dwarf stars they talked about at the beginning. So we often say like stars are kind of like James Deans of the universe. Like the, the brighter you burn, the, the shorter your life. And so these little puny red dwarf stars, they're so pitiful. They're, they're only you know about 100 times the mass of Jupiter, 80 times the mass of Jupiter. So sometimes people call Jupiter like a failed star. If you make Jupiter... 80 times more massive, it would have burned as a, it would have had nuclear fusion. Um, and those stars, they last for a freaking long time, like trillions of years. And we know they have planets around them. We've even found Earth-sized planets at the right distance for liquid water around those stars. And they appear actually really quite common around those stars. So the mystery is, you know, if you run the calculation, I was just doing this a couple of days ago, there's about a one in a thousand chance that you would live at this early point in the history of the universe, all things being equal. If these stars legitimately could have planets around them and biospheres whenever they want throughout their history, then you would be very, it's a kind of like reading a book and opening a random page and that you happen to land on the first you know, couple of pages of the book and that's where we land. And that that is very difficult to understand for me. I think all things being equal, you should expect to live at the end of the universe or the middle of the universe or something. Um, and it makes me think there's something wrong with these with these red dwarf stars. Maybe they're just not allowed, or do the other alternative is there's a cataclysm. There's something that happens to the universe itself that makes it totally inhospitable to life in the future. That's the other way around it. And that's kind of what this Robin Hansen grabby aliens is trying to do, this loud aliens. There might be AI comes along, it just goes berserk, it just takes over everything, and that's you, know, you can't live a trillion years from now because there's nothing left. It's all just AGI at that point. So biological beings fear. could not emerge then. Yeah. So that's us, my we have fear. to come at the beginning because otherwise we wouldn't be here.